Okay, so in uh, both Kings and Chronicles, there's a king, there's a pharaoh named Shishak that's mentioned, and um, brings up the question, who is Shishak? Do we have any proof of him ever existing? And this takes us once again to the idea that a lot of times people who don't know or understand history simply dismiss things out of, out of hand. Some of the things that are dismissed without any basis is that Shishak was not real. That's the first one. Um, that horses were not, uh, that Egypt didn't have access to horses and that um, they didn't have access to chariots and all kinds of nonsense. That's just simply not true. And you can tell when people make these kinds of claims that they really don't know anything about history. And so my point in, in this um, video is to talk a little bit about Shishak, uh, the pharaoh, and also to talk about um, just a little bit of the evidence that, that, that proves <laughs> that people are wrong. Um, first off, um, he is mentioned in 1 Kings 14, 25 through 28, and 2 Chronicles 12, 1 through 12. Now, the first Kings account is is very limited. Um, it doesn't say anything about how many or anything like that. So then that takes us to the Second Chronicles um, edition version, whatever, um, which used different sources. Now, um, if you've ever read through First Kings and Saint, uh, Kings and Chronicles side by side, you realize that some of the dates are are, are off and stuff. There's many reasons for that. First off, um, Israel and Judah used different calendars. Um, also, uh, besides that, it appears as though the writer of Chronicles used um, a calendar to, according to uh, Babylon's calendar system, whereas the writer of Kings used it according to um, Israel and, Ju and Judah's calendar. So there's a little bit of a little bit of problems there, um, and then there's the issue that their calendars don't really work exactly like our calendars do, and there's all kinds of stuff there. But skipping all that, um, which once again is another thing that people simply don't understand, and so they say it's not true or it's inaccurate, which is just not true. Um, so we can relate Shishak to the pharaoh Sh uh, uh, Shishank the first, um, and that would put this conquest at about 926. Now, if you read the account in, in Second Chronicles, it says. When the kingdom of Rehoboam was established and strong, he and all Israel with him forsook the law of the Lord, and it came about in uh, and it came about in King Rehoboam's fifth year, because he had been unfaithful to the Lord, that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. Now this is the Shishank the uh, first, and then it says in verse three, with twelve hundred chariots and sixty thousand horsemen. Now the first thing that is not understood is the use of numbers, especially in ancient literature. Now, these numbers are not exact, but they are um, not exaggerated. I hope you understand what I'm saying. For instance, it says 1,200 chariots. What, did they go out and number them, and there were exactly 1,200? And it says, and 60,000 horsemen. Did they, did they number each one of the people who came out? It's a rounded number, but that, that doesn't mean that it's not correct. It's just rounded. For instance, there were probably... a you know, somewhere there were probably somewhere upward, upward of a thousand chariots, and people would say, "Oh no, that's not possible." Well, it is, and we'll get to that in just a second. But if you keep reading in the same verse, it makes it clear that uh, that these numbers are not exact, although they are accurate. Um, and the people who came with him from Egypt were without number. Okay. Now it says the Luvim and Sukim and uh, the Ethiopians. Now we know that Shashank the first was actually a Libyan, so. Uh, he brought Egyptian forces and forces from, from further south and whatnot. Now, some of the people that he mentioned, um, the Sukim, if I'm remembering correctly, are actually uh, a certain kind of infiltrator um, that we have record of from the Egyptians uh, from the 1200s. So the fact that they're mentioned in this really shows how historical the account in St. Chronicles really is because it gives credence to people that if this had been hypothetically written much later and you know didn't have correct details and were just throwing details together and just making stuff up, they wouldn't have had access to little details like that. And it's little things like that that, that really show us um, people who actually understand history that, 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 that you know the accounts are historical. So uh, there's that. So let's, let's keep moving here. Um, it says he captured the fortified cities of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. Now, the first major 
um, well, let me get to it. Hold on. It said we we know that the, we know that this really did happen because an inscription was left was found at Tel Megiddo um, that uh, gave credence to this. And it, it goes through and it talks about the different places that he conquered, and it's actually referenced again in a temple uh, in Egypt. However, um, both accounts are fragmentary. Now, what that means is they were damaged, and there's large par portions of them that we don't have. So because of that, we don't have a complete list of everything that he did. Okay. Now, that shouldn't really concern us, concern us that much because we can piece enough of it together to know what happened. He had a conquest into Canaan. Now, the, a large, not a large portion, some people will reject Shashank I as Shishak because it never says in, in, in his accounts that he conquered Jerusalem. But if you actually read 1 Kings and 2 Chronicles, the Bible doesn't say that he conquered Jerusalem. It doesn't even say that he attacked Jerusalem. Watch very closely. It says, And it came about in King Rehoboam's fifth year, because they had been unfaithful to the Lord, that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. It doesn't say he attacked it. Now, you might say, well, hold on, hold on. What's the difference? The difference is Jerusalem was a figurehead of Judah. Okay, so to say that it came up against Jerusalem is basically the equivalent of saying they attacked Judah. Okay? A lot of times in the Bible, a capital city or an important city will stand not just for the city itself, but for the place. So Jerusalem would be Judah. Okay? Um, not just that, but there's there's more to look at it than, this, than that anyways. They did go up to Jerusalem. You know, they just didn't necessarily attack it. See, after Sheshach, uh, by his own inscription and by the Bible, if you remember there it says in 4, he captured the fortified cities of Judah. So the Bible says that. And his account says that too, that he attacked these different places. And as he was going up, Jerusalem realized, hey, this is a losing battle. He's wiping us out. So they, they cleared out the stuff and they gave it to Shishak, the stuff that Solomon had built. Now, some people think, well, that list is entirely hypothetical. Solomon didn't really build those things because it was too wealthy and stuff. Actually, we have a lot of comparable cases at the, from the same time of people having way more wealth than Jerusalem had. Okay, So the number and, 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 and description of the wealth that Jerusalem lost at this attack by Shashank I should not be seen as hypothetical or figurative. It is, it is actual truth. Okay, Now... Once again, people who don't know history will blindly say, no, this is just an exaggeration, but there is no historical basis for denying this, um, especially when, Shash when Shish uh, Shashank I actually mentions this himself, that he did this. Now, some people would say, yes, but he never he never in his inscriptions refers to Israel or Judah or to Jeroboam, the king of the north, or um, Rehoboam, the king of the south. Well, that's not really that big of a deal because in long lists like this, Egypt never did. So if you can't <laughs> – there's kind of this thing. If you can't prove the Bible wrong, just make stuff up. And that's kind of what's going on here. The Bible clearly gives description of something from two different views that use multiple sources. And the Egyptian account affirms this, and then people still deny it because they want the Bible so bad to be wrong. But it's not. Um, for more on this, I would highly encourage you to read um, – Really, anything by Kenneth Kitchen. He's a great Egyptologist, um, really a, 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 a level-headed guy. And the problem with Egyptology is a lot of times there's a certain level of pride that goes along with it where, um, you know, kind of like I have all the answers when the actual image is a lot more sparse than that. So the the, the Egyptian accounts of Shashank the first um, conquest are fragmentary, but they are clear as to what happened. And like I said, it says – the Bible says that he came up against Jerusalem. It doesn't say that he ever actually attacked it or that he conquered it. Um, once again, it should be seen as happened quite frequently in the ancient world where a king just kind of bribed him off. Like, here, I'll just give you this stuff. Don't attack us. <laughs> and uh, then we also see that um, from Shawshank's uh, list that he also attacked Jeroboam's um, cities too. Uh, but the biblical writer is not really concerned about giving an exact – um, historical account. Something that people don't really take into account is the Kings and Chronicles, neither of them were written to be an exact historical document recording everything. What they were written for was to analyze history. And so are there events historical? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's important to remember 
remember that they were not written to be historical documents, but they used history to prove their point. So I know it seems like a small minor detail. It's actually a very important detail. So um, as uh, another claim that's made is that there's Egypt didn't have uh, horses and chariots this early on, which is just completely ludicrous. <laughs> that is just completely, completely ridiculous. Um, anybody who knows anything about history <laughs> can very well attest that uh, first off, chariots can be dated. Um, Tethmosis the Third's uh, conquest those, that's during the 1400s. Okay, so there's that. Um, you know, and there's many different cases <laughs> to to, um, to highlight, but I'll reference this on page 115 of On the Reliability of the Old Testament by K. A. Kitchen. Um, they were used by Canaanite princes that were defeated by Tuthmosis III in the 1400s. Um, they were found in the tomb of Tutankhamun and in, around the mid-1300s. And then they were also mentioned in the Marna letters, also from the 1300s. So Shishak was in the 900s. What are the chances that they suddenly stopped being able to use uh, chariots? Hundreds of years later, I mean, that just doesn't follow. And uh, also, that means that the account in Exodus about Pharaoh having 600 chariots um, also should be seen as historical because we can back this up with archaeology. See, the thing is, archaeology is really great if you actually know how to use it. But what people do is they just kind of ignore history and they ignore, ignore archaeology and they just kind of make up the events. Well, they didn't have chariots, so it couldn't be true. Uh, well, actually, yeah, they could have. Uh, well, what about the, the numbers? He couldn't have possibly had that many, that many um, fighters for him. Well, actually, he could have because he mobilized not just Egyptian forces, but Nubian forces and Libyan forces and all this big group of people. Um, we're talking about a mass force here. Now, once again, they were not exact precise numbers. They were probably rounded because I doubt that Pharaoh was like, okay, we have 59,000 horsemen. Let's round that. Let, let's, let's get together a few more so we can get 60,000 even. I mean, come on. But with that being said, the account says itself. They were without number. So the numbers that given should be seen as, once again, rounded. However, they shouldn't be seen as inaccurate. <laughs> There's no reason to assume that they were inaccurate. So with that being said, um, so the, what about horses? Well, we actually have proof of horses in Egypt from the 1500s. So there's really not that big of, of, a, of a problem there. Um, Let's see. Where was I looking at here? So we have, yes, they did. Okay, so earlier on, the Egyptians imported uh, horses. Uh, but after um, the, well, let me see. After I believe it was the 1600s, um, they couldn't. They didn't have access to importing them anymore because of um, trade problems. So then we see um, a clearly uh, them breeding them in the 900s, and then we go back to the. Let me see. I wish I would have made myself notes. Um, the 13th century. Uh, we we have them we have them uh, breeding, and they get there is reference of horse keepers. Uh, droves of horses and grooms and charioteers. So if there's references of charioteers that early on, um, Ramses um, the second uh, sent horses. There's just all kinds of stuff here, and you know honestly, I, I would I would be short uh, short selling. Uh, Kenneth Kitchen, if I were to just read off parts from his own studies, I really cannot e express to you. Read books. Read books. Um, if you're one of those people who just simply denies the Bible's historicity because you have no idea about history, pick up a book and read. Because honestly, most of the most of the things that, that that people say so brazenly about how the Bible isn't historical are so fictitious that it's not even funny. I mean, honestly, a clown could get on. It knows more about history than some of the things that people say. So, long story short, read this book and read other books. 
and really do read, really honestly read and study. I mean, goodness sakes, you know, we have the gift of, of thought. Let's use it. Let's not just blindly believe stuff with no historical basis to it. Um, and uh, so absolutely, Shishak was Shashank the first of Egypt, and there's no reason to doubt the historical claims of 